Hi everyone, um, welcome to the, the Parental Facts. Um, sorry we couldn't do this in person uh, a couple of weeks back because of COVID restrictions, I'm afraid. Um, hopefully I'll get to meet you all in person at some point very, very soon. Um, and this is really just a chance for you to ask some frequently asked questions that I can answer for you via this video. And then hopefully when I see you in person uh, very soon in September and October, you can ask any more questions or please feel free to email the people at the bottom of this uh, presentation so that you'll be able to see um, the people that are involved in the enrolment and starting in year 12, all the way through from pastoral support, all the way through to myself. So um, thank you for your questions, really do appreciate them. Um, there's quite a few for us to go through, so I'm going to make a start on those right now. Um, first question was, my daughter is due to enrol on the 12th of August, uh, and we have a holiday plan for that date but the holding may not take place. However, if it does, will be there another date offered to enrol? And the simple answer to that is yes, of course, there absolutely will be. Uh, we start enrolment from the 12th of August, but actually you can also do it on the Friday, which is the 13th of August. But if you're not around then, all you simply need to do is contact Jess Humphreys and the email address is below um, to be able to arrange another time to enrol, either at the end of the school holidays, which is probably the last week in August, or right at the beginning of when we start term. Um, we officially start on the 1st of September for lateral flow testing for year 12, although the staff have got an inset on that day, so they could technically roll on that day, if not the week before. So either 12th of August, 13th of August, or the last week before uh, the holidays finish, or anything all the way up until the 1st of September, you can enrol if you need to on that date because you're away. So yes, there's plenty of opportunities for you to do that. I do ask though that you email Jess to let her know that you will not be enrolling on the 12th so that we can save your place. Uh, and then we don't run out of spaces in certain subjects. Number two, what enrichment activities do you do at college, including sports clubs and courses and trips? Uh, are there study areas for students to use within college within an after school lesson time? So, first of all, the enrichment activities. Yes, we do. We call that CBT or curriculum bonus time. And there are normally, outside of COVID restrictions, lots of clubs can range anywhere from doing knitting or jigsawing all the way through to playing sports, which could be basketball or football or badminton or tennis and things like that. We've even done things like Games Workshop film uh, david attenborough clubs um we've done lots and lots of other kinds of role-playing games in terms of uh, adventure games that you might play as well and there's plenty of trips that we normally run as well we normally run a trip at least twice a year to international destinations we were due to go to CERN in switzerland last year but unfortunately we couldn't and we were also due to go to new york and washington but there are also trips within uh, the uk as well on top of the normal biology and geography field trips that we would normally have done in normal years Places to study um, within the college, there is a registered study, which is a formal place to study um, in our library area, where there's a member of staff that registers students that work. That's for five hours in the week, um, usually doing work that's been set by the members of staff, which involves revision um, and preparing for their next lessons and so on. Or there's an informal places that they can go and study as well in particular rooms and areas that they can use, including the canteen or in the common room or in extra rooms that we'll be putting on for students to be able to, to study separately as well. And quite a lot of students will take up that um, all the way into the after school, uh, past the activities and, and all the way up till six o'clock at night or quite often stay as well. So during lesson times, it would normally be done within the classroom. They, they can borrow laptops, they can use laptops. There is one available for pretty much every single student on site. There's formal register study, and there's also other areas that they can use to study it as well. Number three, what is happening exactly on the 12th of August? Uh, this is the same day as GCSE results day, so it may be difficult to attend. What happens on the first day at school? What info do the kids get about arrival, classes, map of the campus, schedule, etc.? On what times of the college day uh, are all kids in five days a week? So lots of questions there. Thank you for that. So the first thing is on the 12th of August is enrolment. So what you would do is you would go up and get your results from your secondary school, which uh, could be any one of about 20 secondary schools that we feed from. Um, you would normally go there somewhere between eight o'clock and 11 o'clock in the morning to get your results. And the minute you pick up your envelope, all you need to do is come straight down to Chapel Town Academy with your envelope, your results with some form of ID, uh, and we will enroll you on that day. It usually takes about to do. Um, there's usually lots and lots of staff around to ask questions and, and chat with and so on. 
um, but you will find it's a pretty smooth process. So most enrolments is done by about one o'clock in the afternoon uh, on the 12th of August. As like I said before, you can do it on other days if you need to do so. So all you need to do is simply get your results and bring them down with you, uh, and you should be done with getting your results up at your secondary school pretty quick, uh, and most enrolment is done by about one o'clock. On the first day, well, this is going to be an unusual year, and I'll be writing to you in the holidays to let you know, but on the first day back uh, for year 12, the first day for year 12 will be unfortunately the first of the lateral flow tests, uh, which is about to be announced this afternoon. Uh, and you'll be seeing this, this video, I think, tomorrow. So you'll have already found out about it. So there'll be two lateral flow tests on entry for both year 12 and 13. Year 12 will be on Wednesday, the 1st of September, the first one. And the second one will be on Monday, the 6th of September. And then on the Thursday, uh, which is the 2nd of September, there's an induction process that starts and lasts for two days, which involves getting to know the college, getting to do some quizzes and fun activities, getting to know your teaching staff. We talked about rules and regulations and about what's going to be happening throughout the year, how we're going to assess you, how we're going to look after you and, and so on. So there's lots of information about all of that. And you will get all of that as part of that package when you enrol. Um, the map of the campus site, the schedule, the day, um, what time lessons start, what times they finish and so on. We start at 8.40 in the morning for one year group and 8.45 for the other year group and that will potentially continue into September. So there's a five minute staggered start for each of the year groups that, there, that we've got at the, the academy. And you would normally have everything including breaks and lunch times with a five minute staggered start. Again, that will be sent out to you um, starting from tomorrow onwards uh, and then in the summertime uh, all the way through until when you enrol and then after you enrol uh, there'll be more information sent out as well so you'll get a lot of that on enrolment day on the 12th of August as well. You won't necessarily be in for five days a week although you could be um, if you'd have three subjects you would be studying for 15 periods in, in a week and then you'd have another five periods for registered study. You'd also have um, some time to spend with your form tutor doing some one-to-ones and some other activities that go on during the week. So you probably end up with about um, five to six to seven periods throughout the week where you've got your own time to independently work or you can go home. You don't have to stay on site or you can just chill out and you can go to the common room. You can play pool or badminton or whatever else it might be that you want to do. So there's opportunities there for you to get some downtime as well. Number four, my son has some SEN. Uh, requirements and may need additional support in September. We'll be able to meet with the Senko prior to him starting in September. Um, absolutely. So if your secondary school's already been in touch with us about that, we will have already arranged meetings with Helen Dayton, who is our Senko coordinator, um, is my deputy head as well. So she'll have either already arranged them for you or when you enrol on the 12th of August, you've got a chance to chat with her then and have some meetings with her then. And if there's something else that you want to follow up with afterwards, she'll be available later on uh, in the summer or the beginning of term for you to be able to talk and have conversations as well. Particularly if you've got EHCP requirements, then she will have already planned to meet with you anyway before you start in September. So either on the 12th of August or next week at some point or right at the beginning of September. Uh, but certainly uh, give her an email uh, to let her know who you are. Uh, again, it's on the contact list below. Number five, can I have some more information about uh, the EPQ? Uh, I think we've mentioned about extracurricular activities already uh, and excursions and trips. Um, and when do you enrol is on the 12th of August or as soon as possible afterwards. If you can't do it, then let us know you can't make it on that day. The EPQ is called the Extended um, Project Qualification. It's the equivalent of half an A-level. We do that with the AQA board. And, and it really can be done on absolutely anything that the student wants to do it on. We highly recommend it for students who have got uh, three subjects and want to just back up their point score with a, an extra half an A level. Or sometimes we have students who are on two A levels um, who want to boost their point score as well with an EPQ. It particularly suits students who like to work independently and work on an essay which is related to something they have a great passion about. And that could be anywhere from uh, plastics in the ocean all the way through to World War II planes or anything like that. So it really is down to the student and they will have a mentor that goes with that. And we usually start that process towards the end of year 12 to be finished around about April of year 13. And it can be a really powerful experience. And it's really all about the journey rather than the outcome at the end of it all. So that's the extended project qualification worth half an A-level. Not all students do it, but many do. Number six, how do I let you know if I have achieved the required GCSE results? Following the 12th of August, is there any flexibility to change the subjects I originally chose to study at A-level? If so, what is the process involved to do this? 
Is there any specific bus services available for students attending Chapel Town Academy from Stocksbridge or just public transport? Lots of questions again. Thank you for those. So again, uh, the GCSE results on the 12th, you just simply go to school, get your results, and then you come down to see us, have a look back at the offer that we gave you earlier in the year to see if it matches. And if it does, you're fine. If it doesn't, you probably need to have a conversation with me or my deputy about what we can offer you, or do we need to make any slight alteration, alterations or adjustments to the offer that we have given you? So we can decide that on the day that you get those results. You can absolutely change your subjects. You can change your subjects all the way up until September quite easily, as long as they fit into the blocks. So on the 12th of August, if you've changed your mind, you can swap then. There'll be somebody there to help you then, which will be Laura Barlow. She'll give you advice about which subjects fit into which blocks. Even if you change your mind in September, October, you can do that probably up until about October half term. And after that, we recommend that you don't change because you'll get behind. Uh, but there is the flexibility to do that. And in some cases, some students pick four subjects and then drop one. Uh, because they're not exactly sure which ones they want to do. So they kind of try before you buy with four subjects. Uh, but we don't recommend that you do four subjects all the way through until the end because it's very, very time consuming and difficult and stressful to do four subjects. When most universities really don't want you to do that, they want three good grades from you as part of your level course. There are multiple bus services available that go to Chapel Town Academy that go past Nether Lane or the outskirts of Chapel Town itself between here and Ecclesfield. There is a, there is a public transport bus from Stocksbridge that runs every hour. If you check out on Yorkshire bus services or South Yorkshire bus services, you'll be able to find the number of that bus. Um, but at the moment, we don't put on our own transport, uh, but it is a pretty reliable service that comes from Stocksbridge. Uh, so you should be fine with that. At some point in the future, we may put on our own buses, but we're not quite there yet this year at the moment. Again, number seven, what buses take you to the college? If you go on South Yorkshire Transport, it will tell you all the ones that go past Nether Lane, uh, Hydra Business Park, Nether Lane in Chapel Town between Ecclesfield. And there's, there's a good 10 or so buses that go this way. So no matter where you're coming from, you should be able to get yourself a bus, whether it's from Rotherham, Barnsley, Stocksbridge or south uh, of here towards the centre of town. Number eight, how much are food and drinks? Well, it depends what you're getting, but basically you can get a, a really good meal for about £2.50. So you might get something like a, a burger and chips and something to, to drink for about that much. Or you could get pasta, uh, lasagna or a baked potato or a sandwich and things like that. Uh, so £2.50 is the usual going rate. Breakfast in the morning, you can get a very good uh, McDonald's breakfast. It's not actually McDonald's, it's our own version of it for £2, which is a, an egg McMuffin, kind of, uh, Chapel Town McMuffin, or a bacon version of that. And there's food on right from when you arrive in the morning from 8 o'clock uh, all the way through until 2 o'clock in the afternoon uh, when the canteen then shuts. Number nine, do you run the Duke of Edinburgh? award i've just finished bronze and i'm hoping to go on to silver and gold uh, yes we're hoping to do that we've not obviously run it for a while now uh, but we're certainly hoping to pick it back up in september um, for people who want to do bronze or silver um, and certainly go on to do gold afterwards so i would say that bronze and silver are on the cards for this next coming year um, and we're certainly in, interested in doing that again it may take a little bit of time to get it off the ground because of the COVID restrictions but we've definitely got it on our radar to be doing so yes Number 10, um, will we find out our timetables in September and when we will have the opportunity to potentially change our chosen subjects? Like I mentioned before, you can do that on the 12th of August or you can do that right from the word going September from the 1st onwards um, all the way through to probably October half term to change your subjects. Your timetable will be given to you on the first day that you come to enroll uh, to, to join us. So it won't be on the day of the lateral flow test on the 1st of September. It will be on the 2nd of September, which is the induction day. And you'll get your timetable then and you'll also meet your subject teachers mm -hmm. and also your form tutor at the time as well. Number 11 for the new BTEC students, what will their school day look like and timings, etc.? Well, it's exactly the same as the rest of the students that take three A-levels. So if you're doing a BTEC in health and social or engineering, you will have 15 periods a week of being taught. And then on top of that, the RS registered study, as well as your other times with your form tutor and other activities. But it will be very, very similar to what you would do if you were doing A-levels. If you're doing health and social, you'll be completely on this site. But if you're doing BTEC engineering, you'll spend 12 hours up at the Ecclesfield site doing the engineering in their specific rooms that they have up there, their labs. And then the rest of the time, you'll be doing your, your calculus and your physics side of the BTEC course for engineering down on this site. So you'll spend a full day with us down here, 
plus some time with your form tutor, plus some time doing something called preparing for the future, which everybody does. And it's really getting you ready for, for life as an adult uh, and a bit of time up at Ecclesfield site if you're doing engineering. For everybody else, it's all down here completely. And again, starts at 8.40 and 8.45, 8.40 for year 12 and 8.45 for year 13, just to keep them slightly staggered. Uh, question number 12, will students have access to computers? Yes, there's pretty much um, a laptop for every single student that we have on site um, and they're kept in specific areas in RS rooms or around the site for you to be able to use whenever you want. Uh, on top of that, we've also got students that will get given bursary laptops so they can use them at home as well and specific areas you can use those too. You can also bring in your own laptops or in your own mobile devices. Uh, we do use mobile phones during lessons quite frequently, particularly with things related to things like Teams and so on, where you're doing work um, and you will be able to access the Wi-Fi through bring your own device, which is BYOD. So laptops of your own and your own phones, you will be able to use them on site. The only thing with computers is we'd say you need to have them charged before you come because the actual charging system that you've got would need to be PAT tested by us for you to use it on site. So make sure it's charged up before you bring it in on that day. 14, would it be possible to see an example of a time, typical timetable? Absolutely, I'll go through that in a second with you. Uh, and what transport links go to the college, as I mentioned before, have a look on South Yorkshire. There are literally dozens of buses that come this way past Nether Lane, Hydra Business Park. Is there somewhere students can go to wind down, study between classes, and then they allow a campus in between lessons? Yes, there's a common room. The common room um, has got things in it like table tennis and a pool table and basketball areas, as well as comfy sofas and chairs and so on. Um, and it's the place where you do go to wind down. And we would encourage that you do that when you have a chance, because it's, it's quite intense studying for A-levels uh, when you are here. Um, and of course, you can go off campus if you're supposed to be in a lesson or in a, in a tutorial or in a PF session or RS and you're not there, then we chase you pretty quickly within minutes. But if you don't have to be in one of those sessions, then you can go off site, you can stay on site, you can do what you want. It's completely up to you uh, and you can decide that. So typical timetable, you'd start at 8.45 or 8.40 and then you do two 55 minute lessons up until 10.35. Um, and then you'd have some time with your form tutor for 20 minutes, uh, a break from about 5 to 11 until a quarter past 11. You then got another two periods, period three and period four, which take you up until uh, 5 past 1, which is lunchtime. Uh, lunchtime runs until uh, 1.50 and then there's two more periods in the afternoon. And then at that point, you then finish at 3.40 and you've either got curriculum bonus time, which is when you do activities, or you may have interventions or you may have a reset if you're having to reset your maths or your English. Um, I'll be posting a PowerPoint that's got all these things on it as part of the things that go out uh, on the 7th of July. So you can see exactly how that works as well. Useful contact information for people that are really important. Uh, Jess Humphreys deals with admissions and pastoral support. If you can't make it on the 12th of August, she's the person to contact and say, I won't be there on the 12th. Can you save me a place, please? Uh, and then we make sure that you're in the subjects that you want to do before they get full. Tim Montgomery, who's the progress leader, um, who deals with all things related to your particular year group in year 12. Um, and he can be contacted on that email address. And then Helen Dayton's the Senko if you need to speak to her about SEN issues either before the 12th of August or on the 12th of August or any other time you can contact her on that email address. Uh, reception is simply contact at chapeltownacademy.com and then we've got Zoe Moore who's the exams and bursary uh, officer so she deals with exams and bursary so if you are on free school meals at the moment you may be eligible to apply for bursary which would entitle you to things like books, transport costs, free school meals and the laptop when you're here with us and she'll be able to give you details about that on enrollment day on the 12th of August so you'll be able to fill out the forms for that and see if you are able to qualify for the bursary as well okay so as I said on top of this there'll be a powerpoint with some other more information that you can scroll through, through at your leisure to have a look through those things in terms of timings of the day the kind of places we've been to before how we assess how we measure progress and things like that and in the meantime I'll leave you with those bits of information about the people that you can contact uh, and hopefully I will get to see you very, very soon. Take care.